Whoa, what's up guys? Uh, I don't know if you heard or if you saw my last video, but we just hit a thousand subscribers. So I'm just sitting here watching my subscriber count go up every time I just hit refresh. Got that refresh uh, excitement going on watching it go. We're now at 1,403 subscribers. Crazy growth, right? That doesn't happen without crazy commitment, creativity, consistency, and community. And it's a big thanks to you and to all the people that have been following this channel for the last seven months that I've been able to have this level of success and we're gonna push it to the next level. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can crush it on YouTube and get to 1,000 subscribers from zero to 1,000. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll right into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to another Adrian Graphics and Marketing video. I'm Adrian Boysell, excited to be here with you again today. Today's video is probably gonna be a little longer than normal videos, but I promise if you watch this, you're gonna be blown away. Because today I'm gonna to talk about the two sides of blowing up on YouTube. And you can't blow up or do anything successfully without having a strategy. So the first thing we're gonna talk about today is all about coming up with a strategy for YouTube and how you can win at doing that. But first, I want to start by asking you to please like this video, subscribe. If you can go watch some of my previous videos, that'd be great too. But definitely like the video and subscribe to the channel. I need your guys' subscriptions. It really helps with uh, YouTube's algorithm to be able to get more likes and get more subscriptions. It's just having that like button, subscribe button smash. So please do that for me if you can just get a second. And then we're going to jump right into it. So today, I'm going to talk to you about the strategies as well as the tactics that you're going to need to go from zero to 1,000 YouTube subscribers. Now, 1,000 probably seems like a lot, but now looking at it from where I'm at with 1,400, I went from 1,000 to 1,400 in a matter of like two days. It's really not as bad as you think it is. Once you start picking up momentum, you'll really be able to chug along. So the first thing that you need to have when it comes to building your YouTube channel and wanting it to be successful is having clarity. Without clarity and understanding why you're doing it and what your reasons are, you're gonna struggle for a very long time. I actually started my YouTube channel back in like 2011 when I first started my agency and all I used it for was to upload client work that we did from video testimonials, graphics projects, just to use it as another search engine to be able to drive traffic to me. And as the years have gone by, I've started to get the itch to want to do something with YouTube because I have so many people that I follow like Peter McKinnon, Adam Ivey and uh, Andre Jeeks, just people that are doing amazing things on YouTube and really impacting people. So I've been becoming more and more inspired by these people but I needed to have a clear why and clarity on what I was gonna do it for. And so it wasn't until about a year and a half ago where I decided that I wanted to get more practice as a speaker and get really good in front of the camera and on stage. So I've been speaking all over the country. I have the podcast, radio show. I've been really practicing and pushing myself outside of the comfort zone so that I can get better. For me, the reason why I did this to begin in the beginning and the reason why I had clarity was I knew that I just needed to use this YouTube video series and this channel specifically as a platform to get better at speaking and just be able to have something that I can consistently do every single day. So my encouragement to you is find out why you wanna do this to beginning. Some people just wanna be a YouTube star. If that's your thing, awesome. What does that look like from you? What does reaching your goal actually look like by you being a YouTube star? Do you wanna do it for the money? Are you gonna to try to monetize your videos and make money from the ads? Are you just doing it to practice and to get better? Or are you just trying to be able to teach people or add credibility to yourself? That was one of the other reasons that I had for my channel is I wanted to use it as a platform so when my customers go and Google my name or Google my company name, they see this YouTube channel with thousands and thousands of followers and amazing content so that I can have proof of concept and social proof, if you will, that I actually know what I'm talking about when I sit in front of customers. So that was kind of the second part to why I did this. And so I had clarity going into this and I knew exactly what I was in for. So number two is creativity. We all have to find our own unique and creative approach to making YouTube videos. Some people like to do the vlogging style like Peter McKinnon. Some people are just more natural teaching. Now that I say that, I want you guys to actually get out a notebook and actually go watch the first one so you can capture all those notes. I want you guys to write this stuff down so you can go back and reference it as you're building out your YouTube channel. But having creativity and understanding the type of approach that you're gonna take with your YouTube channel and with your community, which we're going to get to, is really important. You need to understand how your delivery and how your method of strategy is going to be with your approach. Are you going to be very natural and just holding the camera? Are you going to have a tripod? Are you going to have a big studio? You really need to get clarity on that and you need to have creativity in it. So you need to maybe do, if you're doing tutorials, 
then you, maybe you're just gonna show more of your screen and you're not gonna show yourself, but you gotta have good graphics and other things to make up for it. Being creative on YouTube, this is your opportunity to highlight your skills and highlight your personality and show really what makes you different from everybody else. So you need to write that down, creativity, and understand what's different about you than everybody else. And if you need help with that, drop a comment, drop a message to me. I'd love to help you find your creativity, find what gives you your unique edge. It's really important to approach YouTube with creativity because there's thousands and thousands of people doing what I do, doing what you do, and you gotta be able to stand out from the crowd and creativity is going to help you do that. That's what's gonna help you establish your brand. What do you do that nobody else does? Maybe you do impersonations, maybe you make funny faces, maybe you're really good with drawing. Find your thing and stick to that. All right, so number three is consistency. Now this is probably one of the most important strategies when it comes to YouTube, being consistent about posting. I started posting in about October, November of last year, and I was only doing about once or twice a week, and then I realized that I needed to pump out more content than that. And so right around the beginning of the year, I started heavily focusing on pumping out three videos every single week. Every single month since about January, you can see here, and we're now in July, we have all these videos that we've accumulated three a week, every single week, sometimes there's five weeks in a month, and I've got hundreds of videos now that I've compiled with tons of content. What that's actually allowed me to do is gather a bunch of important information on each of these videos. What am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? And being able to learn and adapt and change and grow through all these different videos that I'm doing. So consistency is key, not just for yourself and giving yourself a routine and something that you're used to in terms of planning and strategizing, but also for the YouTube algorithm. If YouTube knows that you're posting every single Monday, Wednesday and Friday, or every single Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday, whatever that looks like for you, I would recommend that you post at least two to three times a week if you wanna make traction, if you wanna make progress, it's gonna help you move things along a lot faster. Maybe once you've reached 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, 20,000 subscribers, you can scale it back to one video a week, but I would really encourage you to at least start off with at least two or three times a week and do not skip videos. I think I've only missed maybe two videos the entire seven months that I've been consistent about this, and that is, I, I believe, is a big part of why I've gone from zero to 1,000 or to 1403. So it's really important to be consistent. It's gonna help you build better habits. It's gonna help you stay in a rhythm. Creating a rhythm is really, really important. I'm a graphic designer. It's what I started doing in 2007. And I noticed when I stopped doing graphic design for a week, two weeks, a month, or two months, trying to get back into a groove or rhythm, or if I miss a week, it's totally different. It takes me a lot longer to adjust and get back into that rhythm. So if you just stay consistent, you'll have a groove and you'll be able to kind of get good feedback from people and find out content that you need and what you don't need. So now number four is community. You cannot forget that YouTube, even though it's like another search engine, it's also a community. There are people commenting on videos, people on live feeds, people sharing their stories, their life, their passions, their joys, their heartbreaks, all these things, philanthropy. There's so many great channels that you can find on YouTube. But you gotta remember that this is a community of people and you can use YouTube to build yourself a tribe. Tribes are key. If you can find like-minded individuals and find a thousand raving fans, you'll be blown away at the difference that it makes for your business. Over the years, as I started to use YouTube more and more, I've been getting phone calls, emails, and even Facebook messages from people saying, hey, I found your stuff on YouTube. I really love to use your services. I've made thousands and thousands of dollars from building a community and building a tribe. These are people that I've built my reputation, my authority and trust with, and now they trust me to use me for, for services that I provide that are high ticket. So that's the way I've been making return on investment by doing these videos because I'm not monetizing these. I'm probably not gonna monetize these videos anytime soon. I'm not doing it for that. I didn't start off with that purpose. So I'm not gonna change it now and get greedy. So making sure that you understand that you need to comment on people's stuff on a regular basis and actually interact with people is very, very important part of YouTube. But I think a lot of YouTube people that talk about getting subscribers, they don't cover it. You need to make sure that you're actually going out, connecting with other people that are also commenting on other of your favorite YouTubers, commenting on their stuff, congratulating the YouTube guys that you're actually following or gals, giving them a shout out and then commenting on other people's stuff. The more you get engaged, the more that YouTube sees you engaging on their platform, commenting back and forth, they're gonna reward you for that. I'm telling you, that has been one of the secrets that has helped me get from zero to a thousand very, very quickly. I feel like it's very quickly. Some people do it in 30 days, 90 days, but I feel like doing it in seven months, the way that I approached it very organically uh, was the smartest way to go. All right, and now number five, and this is huge before we get over to the tactics, is call to action. This is where a lot of people fail, is in every single video in the very beginning, like I did with you guys, in the very middle, like hopefully about right now, I'm gonna ask you guys 
to subscribe. I'm gonna ask you guys to comment and introduce yourself. Tell me what your channel is about. If you have a channel, tell me who you are and what you love about my channel. Or just hit the subscribe button and the like button. If you're not a talkative person, that's okay too. But I want to be able to make sure that I always put out a call to action. So if you're gonna build YouTube videos and you're gonna start your own channel, you need to have a call to action in every video. Otherwise, people aren't gonna take an action. And don't give too many. If you got a course offering and a product and a sales offer and a special, and you give people too many choices, they're not gonna make any. So you gotta make sure that you just have one, if not maybe two calls to action at the very most in each of your videos. You cannot miss that. You have to have a call to action in every video. And make sure you do it at the middle, or the beginning, the middle, and the end. It's very important. So now we're gonna go ahead and get over to the tactic side of the actual application of things that you can do with YouTube and on YouTube that are gonna help you rank. Now that you have the mindset and you have the strategy behind it and hopefully you've written all those things down, and you've really broken it down for yourself on a couple sheets of paper, maybe one sheet, two sheets, if you're like th me, probably four or five. Once you've written it down, now that you can start applying some of these actual tactics and some of the things that you can do on YouTube to really significantly help your growth. So let's go ahead and get into it. <sighs> All right, so now you probably want the meat and potatoes. This is really why you got into this video to begin with, is you want some of the actual tactics, tools, and tips that are gonna help you get from zero to 1,000 subscribers, just like we did. So what I can tell you is the very first thing that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to start commenting on other YouTube channels. You need to start interacting and building a tribe. Even if you just have your channel and you haven't uploaded a single video, it's very important to start going onto other people's channels and commenting and start building relationships with people and start building that familiarity with your name and with your channel name. And if you can go on there and introduce yourself and say what you're about to do and what you're gonna talk about, I start prepping that. There are some YouTubers like Gary Vaynerchuk and Peter McKinnon and Andre Jeek where they get a thousand, two thousand comments. And I've seen some of these people that have commented on these videos where they've had 200 to 500 likes on their comment. And just by posting what they've posted, they've gained two, three, four, five hundred subscribers before they even started. How amazing would it be if you could start a YouTube channel and you already had three to four hundred subscribers? Talk about a trick, right? That is something that I wish I would have known at the beginning that I didn't do is I did have a couple people that I had obviously about 80 people, like I said, that were already subscribed to me because they were friends, colleagues, people that I had already kind of posted a few videos to, clients in the past, things like that, but I hadn't built a community yet. And so what I needed to do was actually start commenting on other YouTuber stuff to really help me gain that edge before I even started posting my videos. Imagine having a captive audience of even just 100 people watching your videos from the day you post your first video. You can put out an announcement or you can do a live, however you're gonna do it, but it's important that you realize commenting on other people's YouTube videos and commenting on other people's comments is really important. It's a really good way to build that awareness, to build that attention and get people to subscribe to your channel. And you gotta, once again, make the call to action. If you put a comment on there, hey, I'm gonna release a video in a week, in two weeks, say, please go subscribe to my channel. You'll love it if you're XYZ, if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a designer, if you're a financial person, if you're a stock trader, whatever that is, make sure you throw a call to action. I'm telling you, call to actions are really, really important. So you got that foundation and now you have the full first tip. Tip number two is actually posting. You gotta post to your YouTube channel. And like I said, you gotta do it consistently. But posting to it at the right time of day is also very important. Most people, and you can Google this, what is the best time to post on YouTube 2020? And most of the statistics and the data that I've read, because I've posted videos at all different times of the day, first thing in the morning, between like 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, because I'm in California, once again at about 11 o'clock, because if you've got to think about the people on the East Coast, about 11 o'clock a.m. on the California time. And then if you're gonna post in the evening, I've noticed between six and eight o'clock is a good time. If you post at an odd hour, you're not gonna get as much traction. If you try to post it at 10, 15 or 9, 45, you're probably not gonna get as much traction in your video. So posting at the right time of day is very important. Post when you know people are on. Post when you go on. Look at the times of the day where you find yourself on YouTube and start posting during those times. Your tribe and your community is probably gonna be very similar to you in terms of their personality when they jump on on their lunch breaks or after work or before work, whatever that looks like, maybe before they even start their day. I think that's the people that are watching these videos is early in the day. They wanna start their day with great content and get some stuff that they can use for the rest of their day. So you can't go wrong with early morning postings. All right, number three, and this is a big one that I've been really learning about, is there's something called the click-through rate of your video. And what that has to do with is when your video appears and is given what they call an impression, 
when they basically show it up as a result. When somebody searches a keyword like call tracking and your video appears, that's called an impression. Now, how many people click on that video is your click-through rate. So depending on how many people click on that is gonna give you a score. And a good score can be anywhere from a 3% all the way as high as 15%. It's very rare, I think, to hit 15%, but I always shoot for about a five to 10% ratio. That's what I'm looking for. And what that has a lot to do with is your thumbnail. Thumbnails are super, super important. Peter McKinnon talks about his thumbnails and how he spends more time creating his thumbnails than he does his actual content for his videos. So what does that tell you? That tells you that your thumbnails is either gonna be your make or break or someone's gonna decide to click on it or not. If they don't click on it and they just scroll right past it because your thumbnail sucks, that's wasted potential. It's basically, you got your billboard up on the highway but you have it blank, right? So you need to make sure that your thumbnails are great. Use very, very big text. Don't put too much text. I would say no more than like three words. I usually do two to three words on my thumbnails. Sometimes I'll do a single word like I quit or something like that or horrible designer or things like that. But I try to keep it very simple. One, two or three words, no more than that. Don't put your name and all these extra things. Just keep it simple, keep it clean. And you can do things like using neon colors as your background. I've seen people do kind of funky looking thumbnails where they got like, lime green and pink and yellow and all these wild colors. You can do that if you want. It does grab people's attention because they're bright, vibrant colors, but you just gotta remember to keep it simple and don't clutter it up with garbage. You wanna just do something that's gonna hook them, that's gonna capture their interest. You wanna have a picture of yourself. If you go look at any of the popular YouTubers, the Peter McKinnons, the Andre Jeeks, the uh, um, Adam Ivies, all these guys, they all put themselves in their YouTube. Marie Forleo, she's a great one. They all put pictures of themselves in their thumbnails usually making some sort of an emotion like oh or uh, or you know and some sort of funny gesture that they do in their videos you want to do something that actually grabs people's attention the human figure is the most recognized thing for other human beings so if you put a picture of yourself and you do something that's eye catchy it's going to grab people's attention and if you fill in that space with gigantic words of something that actually relates to what the topic of the video is like keeping it very simple like i did reactions as a graphic designer to my early work and I called it horrible graphic designer. And so they saw those horrible graphic designer and the title of the video was how uh, my reactions to my early designs or something along those lines. And so you can see it was relative to my thumbnail. So make sure that it, the thumbnail actually matches up with the title. All right, so number four is your titles. Your titles are really important because that's what's actually gonna be searched in the Google search when people, or YouTube search. When people search for a specific topic, your title is either gonna make or break your video. If you do great catchy titles like three tips on how to win friends and influence people or uh, why college graphic designers suck or how to make money online in 2020. Those are some just examples of okay titles. There's better ones out there. Spend time actually creating and crafting a title that's actually gonna stand out and get attention. There's a guy that I follow, his name is Matt and I'm trying to remember his last name, but he has a video called Felt Emo. Felt Emo Might Delete. And so now he's created an entire series of like 10, 15 videos and he uses the same title in every video. He just adds in like felt emo might delete again, right? Because he's positioned himself and he's built a huge amount of awareness and traction around this felt emo might delete. And he does these hilarious, Matt Cutshaw, I think is his name. So you can look him up and you'll see he stays consistent with his message. It's just felt emo might delete video. So stay consistent, do something that's catchy, you don't have to make it overly long and keyword stuff. If you're an SEO guy, you know what I'm talking about, or a marketing guy, you don't need to keyword stuff it. Just keep it simple, make it attractive, make it clean, and you're gonna need to do your research. So number five is research. There are a bunch of tools that you can use, and I'm actually started to rack up some money <laughs> and spending some money on these research tools, is you need to be able to do your research in advance that's gonna help you figure out what those titles should be. Being able to do your due diligence is gonna save you a lot of time and headache, and you're gonna be able to move that needle up to the thousand subscribers a lot faster. So you can use tools like TubeBuddy, and I'm not an affiliate of any of these, or you can use uh, Fame, it's Morning Fame is the other one. TubeBuddy and Morning Fame, and there's even VidIQ. Uh, those are the three top ones that you can use. These are great ways that you can put your title in, and it'll actually give you a score and show you what the competition is, what's the search volume for it, and it'll give you a score between zero and like 100, and you wanna to try to shoot for 50, 60, 70, and get as high of the score as possible. That's really important to get a good score on your titles, so you need to have good research tools, and they're gonna show you other examples of popular videos that are out there that you can rank for, and it's gonna show you opportunities. That's why I love Morning Fame. It's a great tool. I recently signed up for it. 
It's a little bit more on the pricey side, but it's worth it. For me to be able to get to a zero to a thousand as quick as I am, now I'm gonna continue and invest. I've already invested over $25,000 just doing this channel to begin with. It's a significant investment. So that was another thing I was gonna tell you as a side note is if you're not committed and you're not ready to go all out and be consistent and do all the things I talked about at the very beginning of this video, don't waste your time because if you fall off in a month or two, you're gonna to have to start all back over and rebuild your momentum. So make sure that you stay consistent. But it's important that you have some of these tools that I'm talking about and make these investments because it's gonna help you remain accountable and stay consistent because you're gonna have your money on the line, right? And that's what's helped me is I've made the investment. There's no, no backing out now. And so number six actually ties back to the strategy of what your channel is going to be about. And you need to make sure that the topics that you cover are relevant to the audience that you're building. Don't go off in left field and talk about celebrity gossip if your stuff is all about business marketing. Stay relevant and find topics that are recent as well. I recently did a video about Facebook advertising and how all these companies are boycotting and that has been one of my most popular videos because it's very recent. When I did that video, it was like 24 hours after the news story. I got to it before all my other competitors did and now I had the opportunity and the edge. So use trends.google to do research on topics that relate to what you're talking about and find recent things that are having what they call breakouts where people are actually doing a crazy amount of searches like Discord went down. Doing a video on Discord the day of or the day after or within a few minutes of that news story breaking and posting that as breaking news is a huge deal to help you rank on your videos. Okay, so you need to make sure that your topics are relevant, but they're also recent, recent and relevant. So number seven, and this is also really important, is making sure that your descriptions in your videos are completely filled out. A lot of people just do the title, do the thumbnail, and then upload the videos, and they don't do anything when it comes to the actual descriptions. And you need to actually kind of transcribe your videos. You can put time stops if certain people are talking throughout the video, like an interview, and you need to make sure that you actually kind of summarize what that video is about in the description. That's gonna help with the Google ranking or the YouTube ranking, because YouTube and Google are the same company, but it's gonna help you with your ranking in terms of getting that traffic by actually filling out the description and having those keywords in the body of that video. And then just below that, there's another description I call it, it's part of your description, is your tags. You can put things like breaking news or horrible graphic designer or stop hate for profit or Facebook boycott, all these different keywords, you can put as basically hashtags in the bottom of your videos and you'll see it just right there below the descriptions. It's important that you wanna max that out as well. You can put up to 500 characters inside of those. So you can do, like I did on my video, how to get to a thousand subscribers, how to go from zero to a thousand, YouTube growth for new channels, how to build a new YouTube channel, all these different keywords that people are searching on YouTube. If you put those tags in there, it's gonna help you rank. So you need to make sure that you complete the description above and the tag description below and you don't miss those because those are very, very important to helping you rank as well. All right, so number eight, and this is a big deal that a lot of people fail in, is playlists. You need to actually have a really good playlist. When you're creating your different topics, you need to create playlists for each one of them, and then it allows you to actually go into each one and actually put a description in for each playlist. You gotta type out and summarize what the playlist is about. Is it a, if it's a digital marketing training channel, put in there, we share strategies, tips, and tricks on how to do your own digital marketing and how to rank your business locally. We talk about lead generation and Google advertising and Facebook ads. You wanna fill it out as much as Google or YouTube, I should say, will let you. It's really important to do that for each of your playlists and separate the different topics by playlist and then fill those out. That's gonna really help you actually get found on the search engines of YouTube because when people search a certain topic, playlists do come up. So if you put your playlists in there and you put the descriptions in there, that's gonna help you a lot. All right, and so the last two, number nine and number 10, kind of go together, but they are different, is your profile picture of your channel. When you're commenting on other people's stuff, if you have some sort of emotion or some sort of personality within your profile picture, that's gonna attract people to come check you out. If you had a funny character or a funny face or doing something like this, it's gonna get people's attention and you're gonna stand out. Using bright colors in the background, like bright red or bright green or bright yellow, any of those colors, maybe bright pink if you're a lady, you can actually put those colors in your profile picture with your headshot or some sort of basically image. You can put an eyeball or something that grabs people's attention and gets them to go, hey, what is this? That's gonna get them to actually click on your channel. And then number 10, when they do click on your channel, is your cover photo. And I actually had a friend of mine, Jonathan, Jonathan Montoya, he gets a shout out. He's another great YouTuber. Uh, he grew his channel 10 times faster than I did, but I actually had him do an audit on my channel 
And one of the areas that he said that my channel needed the most help, aside from my playlist, was my cover photo because it was kind of all over the place. I had a Wacom Cintiq tablet and a picture of my myself and then my laptop and it said designed to inspire and then it said like uh, business growth, but it wasn't really clear of what kind of business growth. So I actually redid my cover photo and I saw a dramatic change. I saw the traction start to pick up almost immediately. So that was a huge deal is make sure that in your cover photo, right in the dead center that you say exactly what your channel is about. Mentorship for creative entrepreneurs or mentorship and training for web designers or, you know, coaching or consulting for authors or, you know, marketing help for lawyers, whatever your business is, whatever it is that you're doing, you need to put that right there and keep it simple, keep it clean. Don't put too much text. Very important because that's what's going to make them decide to either continue to scroll down and watch your videos and hit subscribe or to just leave the channel. Oh, I don't want to see this or I don't know what this is about. I'm just going to take off. So if you do something that's eye catchy, that's memorable, it's going to get them to stay. So those are the 10 things. I know it's a lot of information today. I hope you wrote everything down. I just wanted to make this video to help you guys grow your channel. I know how much work it is. And again, if you're not willing to put the time and the work in, this is one of the hardest things that I've had to do. Not just learning how to sit in front of the camera and talk, like you're actually sitting here right now with me, but also learning how to actually present the information in the right way, learning how to grow a channel. There's a lot of pieces to growing a YouTube channel that you gotta think about. So you need to make sure that you're 100% committed. If you're not all in, get all out because there are people out there that are like me that are trying to go all in and make something happen. We don't need people that are half in and half out. So just make a decision, go after it if it's what you wanna do and make sure you're clear about why you wanna do it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video with me today. I'm very grateful that you guys helped me get to a thousand subscribers. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Make sure we're always here on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with a new video. This week we're dropping a couple extra and just make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Once again, I just look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. And as always, keep looking up.